Amy Knopf, Amen Kuang, thank you, thank you very much. Without you, all this is not happening. Really, to have 90 hours of content over three days on three simultaneous TV channels for all time zones, for people mm -hmm. from all regions of the world to tune in, only happens with trusted partners such as you. So really, um, all we can say is a big warm thank you, and we look forward to this partner channel session. And uh, on that note, Catherine, please, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you so much, Robin, I appreciate that. And it's an honor to be a part of the Zero Project. And we're sorry we can't be there in person, but we hope next year. So my name is Katherine Johnson. I'm a professor at St. Cloud State University. And I'm here today with other colleagues, Dr. Amy Abert nav Amy, you wanna give a little wave? There's Amy, she'll be presenting in our panel. We have Ms. Xiaorong Zhao, X-I-A-O-R-O-N-G, and then Joe, Z-H-O-U. Thank you, who is a visiting scholar at St. Cloud State University. She will be sharing a panel also, or on our panel. And then we have Hao Ming Huang, who is also on our panel representing Voice of Hand, which is based out of China, but he is currently in California. So thank you very much. All right, my colleagues, I will start. Thank you. They'll be back in a minute. Well, a couple minutes. All right, so I will start our panel. I'm here today with our sign language interpreter who is signing in American Sign Language. So again, greetings to everyone from St. Cloud State University in Minnesota in the United States. We are honored to host this panel on employment and accessibility via ICT for individuals who are deaf in China. My interest in this area of disability advocacy in China began 21 years ago when I joined an educational delegation with Gallaudet University. Gallaudet University is located in Washington, DC and is focused on individuals who are deaf and has a first language of American Sign Language. As an emerging researcher at that time, I completed a study on what the greatest challenges were in the areas of education, employment, and social inclusion for individuals who are deaf. One big challenge identified by the deaf individuals who were interviewed was a lack of access to qualified sign language interpreters. For individuals who are deaf, a lack of access to qualified Chinese sign language interpreters impacts all systems of life. The educational system, preschool through university programming, the economic system, impacting independent living and the ability to have a family, the political system, restricting participation in policy development and implementation. And the fourth, the social cultural value system, impacting deaf people's ability to fully integrate into society as respected contributing members of a community. The interdependentness and interconnectedness of these four systems significantly impacts and reduces the ability of individuals who are deaf in reaching their full human potential. 20 years ago, it was still common practice to have a friend or a family member serve as the sign language interpreter for a deaf per person. As one can imagine, this greatly limited the degree of independent living and employment for the deaf community. Now in 2021, technology has greatly advanced since that time, connecting the deaf community via smartphones and online apps such as WeChat. This is great for connecting deaf individuals with each other, but challenges still remain in connecting the deaf community with the hearing community and bridging that communication gap. To address this challenge, new video relay services or VRS started to develop in China that would provide CSL interpreting virtually. Today, we will highlight one of the most innovative VRS organizations that has quality, high quality ICT and a fully accessible platform for providing this highly needed service for individuals who are deaf. However, 
Mm -hmm. Linked to this VR service is the human element of the qualified sign language interpreters. You will find that a common theme in our presentations today. In China, it is estimated that there are approximately 20 million people who are deaf or hard of hearing, yet only 100, approximately 100 qualified CSL interpreters are in the country. This panel will highlight the ICT platform of Voice of Hands, inclusive of a guided video tour on site in China. We will present research findings on the current status of interpreter training programs in China, and we will conclude with a visiting or with a presentation by our own visiting research scholar at St. Cloud State University, who we are very proud of, who is deaf on the impact of the identified lack of qualified certified Chinese sign language interpreters has on the ICT platforms like Voice of Hands. Addressing this challenge and developing Chinese sign language interpreter educational programs would contribute to an increase in independent living, educational and employment opportunities. Innovative ICT as provided through organizations like Voice of Hands will be able to provide access and equity for individuals who use sign, Chinese sign language as a first language for communication. Once there are enough, in a few years hopefully, CSL interpreters to provide the service, this would lead to untapping the potential of millions of Chinese citizens who are deaf. So next, I am excited to welcome our own Hao Ming Huang, if you can come on and share, that would be awesome. And I, I my slide up. Yes, you may. So I am going to remove my video and let you take over and share your presentation on voice of hand. Thank you. Okay, so greetings everyone. My name is Hao Ming and I am a representative of the Voice of Hand company in China. Our CEO, Dr. Bing Chen, is unfortunately unable to join us today due to scheduling conflict. So in today, I will be introducing our company, describe the different situations where we are needed, and how are we able to support the deaf community in China in their employment journey. So Voice of Hand technology, information technology started in December of 2014 as a social enterprise. Our headquarters is in Zhuzhou City, but we also have a few other sites across China. Um, we are dedicated to serve the deaf community in China through continuous innovation to accelerate the progress of deaf and, and hearing integration. We aim to ease the communication barrier of the deaf people in China in different situations. Our team currently consists more than 20 members, including sign language interpreters, software engineers, video creators, and deaf staff from various backgrounds. As Dr. Johnson mentioned earlier, there are currently 20 million people in China with hearing impairment, and about 5 million of them are profoundly deaf. Most of them live a rather isolated life or associate only with other deaf people. Being able to communicate to the hearing community is critical for the deaf people to participate in everyday life. And currently, China lacks um, interpreting services. The training is inefficient, and we don't, and we simply don't have enough interpreters to meet the needs of millions of deaf people. The lack of interpreting services has presented many challenges for the deaf people in situations like education, employment, or simply everyday activities. So, to respond to this challenge. We, our company, has successfully developed a video sign language interpreting system, and we are able to provide high-quality VRS and VRI services for the deaf community in China. In addition to that, our company also provides education, vocational training, and other services as well. 
deaf users can access our interpreting services at any time, any location, using a mobile device, and is completely free. So here are some of the applications where we are used. Right now, the, um, the deaf community in China can access barrier-free public service in places like banks, hospitals, and government agencies. We have also helped deaf people to call emergency medical services and have safe lives. Deaf people can also use our service to chat with their hearing families and friends. In companies with deaf employees, we also set up a system so they become more involved with the company and chat with other coworkers. Our interpreting service is also used in various conferences hosted by local and national disabled people's uh, federation alongside local and deaf, local and national deaf association. Our remote interpreting service was proven critical during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. China has enforced many lockdowns to, to prevent the spread of the virus. During those lockdowns, healthcare workers, government officials, and community workers will show up at your door for different services. This process can be rather confusing or can, um, this process can be rather confusing and frustrating for a deaf community due to language barrier. However, most of them are able to use our service um, to facilitate the communication with whoever show, shows up. Besides remote services, Voice of Hand also provides a space for local deaf community to gather and socialize. We also host different panels to teach them different skills, such as interviewing, filling out the application, and learning about different legal affairs. And our goal is to assist and support the deaf community in various activities and able to live a communication barrier-free life. So Voice of Hand started to provide video sign language interpreting services in August of 2017. To our understanding, we are the first video sign language interpreting platform in China. As you can see in the graph here, up to December of 2020, we have over 40,000 registered users alongside 5,000 active uh, monthly users. The yellow dots shows where our service is used. And as you can see, it has spread out the country with most of the users in the Southeast region of China. We have also received calls from Japan, the United States and France, et cetera. The service is available between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. But we can also be reached during off hours um, through reservations or emergency contact. We have been able to provide over 4,700 hours of interpreting service in a span of less than four years. And now I would like to highlight that Voice of Hand has played a vital role in supporting the employment of the deaf community in China. The deaf community in China has, in, has been enduring three main challenges. Accessing equal employment opportunities, receiving equal professional development opportunities, and working in a barrier-free environment. First, there are very limited employment opportunities available for deaf people. Without quality sign language interpreting service, it is very difficult for them to access employment information, inquire job opportunities, and attend interviews. We have seen many deaf people were misled or scammed by irresponsible job agents. On another hand, the HR in companies has a hard time communicating with the deaf workers, which has created many issues and led to man and, and the in increase of management costs. The, um, the, the, therefore, many companies prefer to hire people with other disabilities who are able to communicate orally. Second, most deaf people in China work on simple and repetitive tasks in the factories. They're unable to take more skilled and higher paid jobs because they don't have equal access to, pro to professional training and personal development as they are not supported by the interpreting services. As a res result, they can only stay in the in the mundane job and they and they also don't really, they are not able to chat with their coworkers as well. So Voice of Hand aims to support the deaf community and help them in address these challenges through video sign language interpreting services. First, we allow deaf people to communicate to the HR of different companies 
gather in employment information, attend interviews, and deal with different conflicts related to the employment. Employee, um, employment related call is actually the third most common cause in the interpreting services, right after the calls to families and friends and calls to the third party customer service. We have noticed a significant increase of employment related calls during the pandemic, where many deaf people are desperate to find jobs, when physical interviews became very difficult. Voice of Hand helped deaf people to find jobs far away from their home through our high quality interpreting services. Second, um, Voice of Hand helped empower deaf employees by providing quality sign language interpreting service to support the professional training and personal development. Voice of Hand has been working with different companies to customize these courses for the deaf employees through sign language interpreting services. So they are able to further develop their skill and career, which is a life-changing opportunity for many of them. Voice of Hand also help to train deaf employees when companies bring new products or new processes. This allows deaf employees to take more skilled tasks with higher pay. Third, Voice of Hand help deaf employees to build a barrier-free environment at workplace for the deaf employees. Our interpreting services system are installed in different places across the company where communication between deaf and hearing might, might occur, such as the workstation, offices, conference room, cafeteria, etc. This allowed the deaf employees to effectively communicate and socialize with other employees. As a result, deaf employees feel way more belonged and respected. Therefore, they are likely to stay at one company for a longer period of time and become more involved. It is critical that barrier-free environment is critical um, for the deaf employees, but also for the employers to improve their efficacy and reduce management costs. And right now, I would like to go over a specific example with all of you. From October of 2019, on behalf of the regional government in Zhuzhou, Voice of Hand carried out a one-year trial in the city to provide video sign language interpreting service at 14 public service locations, such as banks, hospitals, special education schools, government agency, and companies for the deaf community. And company and they are encouraged to, to um, hire more deaf workers in the future. So as a social enterprise, we have maintained the same goal of supporting the deaf community throughout the years. We have played a vital role in the lives of deaf community in China. With our remote interpreting services, deaf people are able to communicate with others to a degree of barrier free. We will keep improving our services and continue to support the deaf community in China in other areas. So this is our CEO, Dr. Bing Chen. His content information email is up here as well. If you have any more questions or comments, please feel free to contact him. And I would like to end today's presentation with a quote from him. We, as in Voice of Hand, 
are looking for international learning and collaborating opportunities in sign language interpreting, deaf education, and deaf employment. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate your presentation. I am going to remove that spotlight. There we go. Okay, so um, I am now going to share with you the video um, tour that we have through Voice of Hand. We have it uh, recorded and closed captioned. So my apologies to participants uh, viewing this through the Zero Project streamer. It appears that our captioning is Oh, it's working again. Okay, great. <laughs> so we will um, also have this be recorded. So if you missed any of that, we will have that available um, after the conference. Okay, one minute. I'm going to share my screen. Thank you for your patience, everyone. And... Actually, first I'm going to play this one because I have it up. One of the things that we're trying to do through working on um, increasing the opportunity for interpreters and access through IET for interpreters is to actually increase the job opportunities for individuals who are deaf. So first I'm going to share a short public service announcement that we did almost 20 years ago uh, when I was working as a consultant to UNICEF in Beijing. So first, let me share this with you. Um, one second, I think I forgot to add the video. Amy Knopf, please forgive me. Okay, we're good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Ah, okay, here we go. I did find the correct one. Here we go. This one is actually voice of hand. My apologies. Hello, welcome to the voice of hand. Voice of Hand is a socially innovative enterprise that serves the deaf community to help deaf and hearing integration. Voice of Hand has the largest full-time professional sign language interpreter team in China, including two deaf translators. Voice of Hand app provides three major services for the deaf community, online translation, dialing service, and also voice and text translation. Deaf people can communicate with people around them through a dialing service via voice and text translation. People can communicate with not only other people, but also a group of people. Hello, now we can communicate. Can I just speak directly? Yes, sign language interpreter can translate what you say to me in real time. I won't go home on National Day. Where are you going? I'm traveling to Changsha. Video online translation and dialing service have changed the original way of deaf people to hearing people. Communication, it avoids misunderstanding and ineffective written information. It also makes deaf people and hearing people communication more effective. Besides, we have a conference room. In this way, we can provide real-time sign language translation services for various meetings. It makes it possible for deaf and hearing people to receive information and express their opinions in the same space. We are in a public institution also, such as banks, hospitals, train, bus stations, airports, government agencies, and various meeting places, providing a one-stop online sign language translation service. Here is our sign language translation center. It accommodates 11 interpreters at the same time. It provides video relay translation services. 
The screen above is our Translation Service Center. People can also connect in real time with our sign language translation centers established across the country to achieve effective collaboration and proper management. This is our real-time data monitoring system. There are now more than 18,000 registered users. The yellow dots on the map show that our users are from all over the country. We also have an excellent technical team, operation team, and video production team. So far, we have made more than 200 videos. The videos have been shared a lot among the deaf community, which have brought a lot of positive energy to more and more people, and hence have been discussed a lot by people in all walks of life. We've also offered many seminars and trainings in, in our National Chinese Sign Language Training Center. Our training set sessions cover vocational skills, legal awareness, medical first aid, sign language teaching materials, as well as many other areas. In addition, we have completed the development of several sign language tools to help hearing and deaf people learn sign languages. Artificial intelligence is the goal for our future development. It requires huge data and computing power. And that is exactly what we are working on for our three to five year plan. To collect a massive amount of sign language videos, Eventually, we are hoping to create an automatic sign language interpretation system. When that time comes, all deaf people in the world will equal their counterpart. They will be completely included in society without barriers. Okay. Excellent, and thank you to Voice of Hand for sharing that video and creating that for this Zero Project Conference. Next, we would like to welcome Dr. Amy Aber Knopf, who is a professor at St. Cloud State University. So I will welcome Amy to share her presentation. Hello, everyone. I'm Amy Aber Knopf. I'm so happy to be sharing this space with you. And uh, I wish we were in Vienna. Um, um, I miss you all and look forward to being with you next year. Uh, thank you, David, for a wonderful presentation and video that describes uh, the services that Voice of Hands provides in China. Our work with Voice of Hands has been critical in connecting our networks um, and to expand opportunities for deaf people in China. In 2018, I spent four months in China conducting qualitative research, investigating the similarities and differences in education and employment opportunities between the United States and China for people who are deaf. And my goal was to expand on the work that Dr. Kathy Johnson conducted 20 years ago. I traveled to eight provinces as well as Hong Kong and interviewed school administrators, hearing teachers, deaf teachers, deaf adults, parents, um, and interpreters. Uh, today, I'd like to share some of those findings with you. First, I'd like to highlight some of the similarities between the United States and China when it comes to deaf education and employment. In both countries, many of the deaf schools are shrinking in number. And in fact, about 80% of deaf students now attend a public school and only about 20% attend schools for the deaf. Um, also, many schools for the deaf in China are actually becoming schools not only for deaf students, but for those that also have cognitive disabilities or autism. Another similarity between both countries is low reading levels of deaf students. And this actually is a phenomenon in many countries, not just related to China and the United States. And um, I believe it's related to language deprivation and not having access to a visual language from birth. Um, still, both countries, um, parents are told by doctors that deaf children need speech training early to be successful in an oral method. So many parents are choosing um, an oral education. Uh, typically, uh, the children start an um, oral rehabilitation speech at a very early age. And in China, 
this training is very expensive. And some of the parents that I spoke to um, said that they had to um, sell their houses or move in with the family members just to be able to afford this type of training. Um, also, um, in both countries, many parents uh, still choose cochlear implants uh, for their children. Uh, now, I'd like to highlight some of the differences that I found um, in China uh, from the United States through my research. Uh, the most notable is the philosophy and approach to educating the deaf student. So in China, schools for the deaf have mostly an oral teaching approach. Uh, there was one school that I found with the help of the Amity Foundation that had a bilingual bicultural pilot project that provided sign, la sign language instruction with a co-teaching model of a deaf and a hearing teacher. It was very successful, but it didn't continue after the grant funding went away. But the majority of schools um, are uh, rooted in this oral method of instruction. Secondly, for most deaf children, Chinese sign language is learned usually after they fail out of an oral education. So by the time that they're taught Chinese sign language, um, they are much older and have missed important developmental milestones uh, for language learning. Uh, another difference is that schools for the deaf do not have the same system of collaboration with public schools to provide specialized course learning or uh, busing from the schools for the deaf to public schools to participate in sports or in other activities. Um, also in China, very few administrators, teachers, or staff, or people who are deaf. Uh, there were only a couple schools that I visited that had deaf teachers, and at both schools, uh, those teachers taught art. And um, there aren't any academic programs in deaf education, so many of the teachers that do teach in schools for the deaf don't have the experience or education or background in working with deaf students. So many of them do not know sign language um, and of course do not know natural sign language in which Shai Rong will talk more about. Um, so classes are mostly taught in spoken Chinese. There are little or no services for students who are transitioning from school to work or school to college. And so we see a lot of deaf individuals becoming entrepreneurs and starting their own businesses. There were quite a few wonderful uh, businesses that I was able to visit or learn about from folks that I interviewed. For students who are going to college, career options are still restricted to the arts, dance, or computer design. One of the main problems in education is that deaf students have little access to qualified interpreters, and that's a primary um, reason why they aren't able to continue to um, go into other majors or um, take classes with other hearing students. There's no sign language interpreters. Um, and this is primarily due to not having a national system of standardization for sign language interpreters. And this is an area that Dr. Johnson and I are working with our partners in China in building the capacity and growing deaf leaders. And so um, I'm really excited for you to um, meet one of the deaf leaders that we've been working with next. Um, our goal um, to have an innovative impact with our partners in China um, is to work to advance education and employment for people who are deaf. Deaf people need communication access. And so one of the ways we're having an innovative impact is by continuing to work with our partners who are working on developing the standardization of Chinese sign language interpreter training programs. And through the establishment of national testing system for sign language interpreters. Uh, there's so much work to do, but we are gaining momentum and we are starting to see some changes like what you saw today with Voice of Hands. Um, so, uh, we are continuing to uh, work in this area to incre increase communication access through the development of interpreter education programs, deaf education programs, 
early childhood and parent education programs and expanding the professional academic discipline outside of just the arts and vocational training. Uh, we believe that through this work and having access to communication will allow deaf individuals uh, full participation within the political, economic, educational, and cultural systems of society. And this will lead to an increased pool of deaf leaders to work in all sectors of society. Now it's my special pleasure to introduce to you my colleague and friend, Shai Rong Jo. And Shai Rong is currently a visiting research scholar at St. Cloud State University and is working with Dr. Johnson and myself on developing curriculum to teach Chinese sign language as a second language for deaf students in the United States. She's going to talk to you about her experience growing up deaf in China. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Amy Naff. I'm sorry we had a little bit of difficulty, but we're very thankful that your audio continued to work for us. Xiao Rong, can you open up your computer now, please? And we welcome you. There you, yay. Thank you. I will shut off mine and it's your turn, okay? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Johnson and Dr. Knopf. Thank you for introducing me. I, I very much appreciate it. I have learned so much from your support in being here. I have a tremendous amount of respect for these two women because of what they're doing for the deaf community in China. I'd also like to thank the Zero Project for inviting me. I am thrilled to be here. All right, so. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this conference. My name is Shai Rong. It is spelled X-I-A-O-R-O-N-G. And I'm here in America. I'm in Minnesota. I'm at St. Cloud State University where I'm a visiting research scholar. I've been here since 2019. And I've learned so much about laws, about uh, I, I, I've learned so much about the laws and the different and the different aspects of deafness in America. Um, it's just been a little overwhelming. And with my China, with the CSL curriculum development that we're researching and developing here at St. Cloud State University, I'm doing this by looking at how people learn American Sign Language and the foundations with ASL curriculum and then applying that to Chinese Sign Language and teaching, teaching and how that looks, what that looks like to teach Sign Language. ICT is wonderful. It's wonderful for deaf and hearing because it's very important to work barrier free through things like video phones, like Sorensen and Purple, using platforms like Zoom to be able to connect and network through these platforms. So what I'd like to talk to you about today, um, I'd like to first mention that the presentation on Voice of Hand was wonderful. Voice of Hand is a wonderful company. But we don't have enough interpreters. We don't have enough qualified interpreters. And the reason we don't have enough qualified interpreters is because we don't have educational systems set up to train interpreters. We have no curriculum for training interpreters. And so I'm going to tell you a couple of personal stories, and I'd like to be able to show you four examples of, of things that I have learned over the years growing up in China. So 
we had a at school we had deaf and hearing instructors and this has to do with an interpreter training program and they the students were being taught not natural sign language not chinese sign language but a coded a, a code more of a coded a code for each chinese word or character and when that semester was finished we had then there was a deaf instructor who was brought in who was teaching Chinese sign language in the natural form, in the visual gestural form in which deaf people use. And so the students were confused because what they had learned in the first semester, they were, they were telling the deaf instructor that, no, that's not right. And for me, growing up with a, with a natural sign language, Chinese sign language, being forced to either lip read or to, uh, to be in an oral approach, there's a, there's a tremendous internal conflict with that. Most people who are hearing who teach sign language don't know anything about sign language or even sign language. So sometimes hearing instructors, they don't have the skills and that produces a barrier. And let me give you an example. Chinese sign language, and then the um, other type of sign language where it was more of a Chinese coded um, word for word. Let me think if I can think of an example. So in Chinese, in signing, if I were to sign the exact Chinese words, it was it's very linear. It's very it's very I am doing, I am going. But in natural sign language. Natural, natural Chinese sign language is a 3D, three-dimensional language that spans, uh, that, that spans space and allows people to be able to see the language. And what's important is that, that it incorporates deaf culture, deaf culture and deaf language. My, my second scenario has to do with a deaf man who had been charged with a minor violation and had been placed in jail. And communication wasn't happening between the deaf man and the, and the jail. And so they actually brought a hearing teacher who thought, I mean, who, who the police thought knew sign language to serve as an interpreter. And the teacher had said, oh, I know this man. He was my student. And that, you know, he had been in trouble in school. And, and anyway, um, the, af, as a result of a lack of interpretation, the man was actually put in, placed into jail for a very minor violation. Um, because communication just wasn't there and didn't happen. And he was left not knowing why he was in jail or what had, what had occurred. So that day, he was taken to court, again, without an interpreter. Questions were asked. He didn't have an interpreter there to help. And a lot of questions were asked, and they were simple yes-no questions. There was no opportunity to discuss, and he was he was convicted. And he had his he he while in jail, there was no um, there was no confidentiality that was that was um, exercised. That everything you know was was. Um, Either he 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 uh, he had no communication that was not confidential. He wasn't allowed he wasn't allowed that afford he wasn't afforded that um, that benefit. I'm going to step in and help. So um, because I work with Shaorong, one one second, can you interpret for me, Amy? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So Shaorong is explaining that when the deaf teacher who came from the school came and was invited by the police to interpret. Uh, she did not interpret. She only had a communication directly with the police officer and the individual who was deaf was left out of the conversation. 
and the deaf teacher or the hearing teacher who signed, sorry, my apologies, the hearing teacher who signed did not sign appropriately and did not sign the communication between the police officer and the teacher. And right. therefore the man who was deaf um, really had no idea what was happening, did not have an opportunity to explain himself and confidentiality for the man who was deaf was not uh, provided because the teacher was sharing things about the man when he was a student. And so um, again, it, it aligns with the fact that we don't have qualified sign language interpreters who have a code of ethics. Thank you, Amy Kalmas. I'll, I'll help out when I, when I can. Yeah, so he was put into jail and that was a very traumatic event. So was there any trust that this man would have for interpreters? Absolutely not, because the interpreter, the interpreter talked about every, the, the interpreter talked about everything that that happened. So this man had no confidentiality. Um, he talked about the, the interpreter talked about his personal information, and that should have all been confidential. Okay, so my third scenario is when I attend. I went to the hospital, and I was not provided with an interpreter. A friend of mine came to interpret. And I had something going on with my eyes. I needed to see the eye doctor. And so my friend came to interpret and my, my person was talking and I was like, wait a second. And, and again, talking directly, the person who was there to interpret was talking directly to the interpreter. And I was left saying, wait a minute, what's going on? These are my eyes, what's, what's being said? And, I, and, and she said, well, I don't really know exactly what's going on. And I thought, Wait a second. So I wrote back and forth. I, 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 I took initiative and wrote back and forth. And the interpreter said, oh, 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 that's the word. Oh, oh, oh. And so then, um, again, direct communication between the interpreter and the doctor was happening, leaving me out. And, I mean, this person didn't have any training. This person was not a professional interpreter. No, no training at all. And so it was a very superficial interpretation that happened leaving me out. And with all of this going on, it left me feeling very, well, first of all, very awkward, but it left me feeling disabled because I wasn't included in the conversation or the discussion about my health and my eyes. And then here in America, um, I actually had to visit a doctor again. I went to the hospital and the interpreter, <laughs> the interpreter was there and said, you know, we, we came in and was like, well, I, I walked in and was like, whoa, I feel independent because this interpreter was extremely qualified and spoke, you know, interpreted for me and interpreted for the doctor. And it was a direct communication between me and the doctor. And that night, That night, somebody asked me, you know, so what, 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 what's going on? What, what's happening? And and so I was able to, um, because the interpreter and the doctor, I was able to have full access to communication. And and later that night, we were talking about, wait, what, what word was that? What word was that? And. Um, what does this mean? And so I would have to ask, and she would say, well, Sharon wants to know what is this? And I, 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 felt, I felt so inspired and so empowered because I felt as though it was me being able to communicate directly with the doctor, getting my answers, getting my questions answered, and knowing what was going on, and felt extremely included because I had that access to communication. Now, from a Chinese perspective, if you get an interpreter, it may be that the interpreter doesn't know what to do. Hospitals aren't providing interpreters. Courts aren't providing interpreters. How, how people are learning to interpret, I don't know. It's, it, it is, it's a problem. It's a problem that we have in China. It's different than what it is here in America. 
we have the Americans with Disabilities Act. We have a lot of um, access to uh, publications and communications and uh, information sharing. And so I learned that coming to America, that as a deaf student, I had a right to have an interpreter. That was a part of, that was just a part of how it works here. And so um, there was nothing equivalent to that in China with the, C, the CRPD, nothing. So in China at the schools, the schools often are mainstreamed. And I, I, when I was there, I was in a mainstream program. I didn't have any access to language. Um, I did have, there was some captioning that was automated, but when I would read it, it was very limited. Well, I would read it and then I wasn't able to retain everything that I read. And again, typically people are studying, deaf people are studying art. Um, and so easier to maybe um, comprehend that way, but um, hard to be able to, to take in class that way without an interpreter. So when I took a class, I took a medical class here in America, medical terminology class. I always have an interpreter. I always had an interpreter. I always had a quality, qualified interpreter. And the teacher would ask me, you know, how's the interpreter? Good? Bad? And so I had the... I had the ability to make that decision myself and decide I can actually like deny an interpreter because they're not able to do a good job. I didn't even know how to do that, but I could do it. In, I could do it here and I didn't even know, but they asked me, they actually asked my opinion. Is the interpreter good? Is the interpreter bad? Do you want a different interpreter? I had never experienced anything like that. ASL class in American Sign Language And, and then with DBL, Kathy? D2L is a platform we use at St. Cloud State. Oh. Yes, yes. So, using D, so using D2L at St. Cloud State University, I was, I'm able to access, I'm able to access English, uh, language. English is not my first language. And so I'm able to access and to be able to read, to be able to match and accommodate the needs that I have as, a, as English not being my first language. I'm able to do okay. that here in the United States. And I'm, I'm really, really sorry, but we have only one minute left and we are going to be cut off. And so, yeah. So I'm sorry, Sharang, that we have to cut you off. Um, no, it's okay. But, so if I can just say thank you to everyone who has joined our presentation, we will again have this in a recorded version for later. And uh, we look forward to sharing more information with everyone. Again, please reach out to us. We do have our emails on the Zero Project platform, and we would love to uh, invite others to join our, our team. So thank you. Can everyone come on and say goodbye? Please open up your cameras. There's Dr. Nav. Coming. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Okay.